All right, so let's look at animals now. Uh, and so first off, let's look at the characteristics of animals. Uh, the three characteristics of animals are all right here. Uh, one is that animals eat other organisms, right? So we all ingest either in whole or in part other organisms. We all move at some point in our life cycle, uh, and then uh, we are all multicellular, all right? So let's look at some distinctions uh, that divide the classification of animals. Uh, one is that we have uh, defined tissues. So uh, sponges do not have defined tissues. Everything else has defined tissues. So, you know, with defined tissues like, um, and I know we don't talk about this in this class, but epithelial tissues or connective tissues or muscle tissues or nervous tissues, those are the four main categories. Uh, sponges don't have any of that stuff. So epithelial tissues is coverings. Uh, next is symmetry type. So, uh, so if we look at this picture here, uh, one symmetry type uh, is uh, just being asymmetrical, meaning you have no body symmetry. And the only thing that's uh, asymmetrical uh, are sponges, again, all right? Next is radial symmetry, is what we see here. This is a, a radial symmetry. Uh, your body plan is kind of like a pie, so you can divide that body plan in several ways. And you, uh, you know, so this side is similar to that side, this side is similar to that side, this side is similar to that side, all right? Or uh, you can be bilaterally symmetrical, uh, and this is an organism that has a left side and a right side, all right? So uh, like the frog, we are bilaterally symmetrical. Uh, next is gut development. Uh, so gut development, uh, this is during embryological uh, development. So basically, you know, our uh, digestive tract. And there are two ways the digestive tract uh, uh, begins. Uh, one is called a protostome. So uh, protostomes, uh, so this is showing gut developments here. Uh, so protostomes, uh, proto uh, means uh, first, uh, and stome means mouth. So this is gut development from the front to the back. So from mouth to anus. So the hole that starts, uh, it becomes the mouth on that, all right? And so this group right here are all uh, protostomes. Next are deuterostomes. Deutero means second, so mouth second. So this is gut development, gut development back to front. Uh, so this starts at the anus and goes to the mouth. And you know, that's where we are. We're with the chordates over here. Next uh, is whether it molts or not. So uh, molting is where an animal sheds an exoskeleton and replaces it with a larger one. So basically they have a soft cuticle that expands and then hardens, all right? So uh, these organisms grow in intervals. And so roundworms and arthropods, insects and spiders are in that group. Next is no molting. So when you don't molt, here the animal adds uh, size by increasing skeletal elements. And here you grow in a continuous manner. And so all these other animals here uh, do not molt. Next is by body cavity. So this is showing uh, body cavity here. So the first is being acelomate, meaning you do not have a body cavity. And this is what we see with these flatworms here. Uh, they do not have a body cavity. So this is showing uh, embryological tissues here again. So this endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm, all right? So if we go to the next one, uh, which is a pseudocelomate, where they have a false body cavity. So here, there's a space between their endoderm and their mesoderm, all right? So next is being uh, coelomate, where you have a true body cavity. So here you can see that that uh, endoderm is surrounded by a mesoderm, and then there's a space uh, between the different layers of mesoderm there. All right. Okay. So that's how we uh, distinguish these uh, different organisms here. So now let's start into looking at the major animal phyla. So, all right. So phylum is uh, below kingdom here. All right. So the first group are sponges. Now, if you have my notes, I list the number of species of each one, but don't pay any attention to that. Uh, the thing about sponges, sponges are asymmetrical uh, and they have no distinct tissues or organs. Uh, their body consists of a hollow tube, and maybe I'll get to a picture of this, yeah. So uh, it consists of a hollow tube um, uh, with pores in its walls, lots of pores here, all right? 
Uh, and so uh, through uh, the movement of these flagella, they pull in water in here and they filter feed uh, through the water there. That's essentially how they live. Now, uh, they don't move as adults. They're uh, called sessile as adults. Uh, they are mostly marine. Why they're listed with animals is because they have a free swimming larval stage. So it will swim to an area uh, and then stop in that area and stay there for the rest of its life. So this is showing, you know, various different kinds of uh, sponges here. So uh, next are nidarians. So nidaria are the jellies, hydras, corals, and sea anemones. So here's showing a jelly, uh, here showing a coral, high magnification there, uh, and a sea anemone there. All right, so um, let's look at this. So all these guys here um, have a soft gelatinous radially symmetrical body, all right? And they have tentacles, uh, and those tentacles uh, contain these stinging cells on them, all right? Uh, and so, you know, if a prey comes by, uh, this starts this trigger, and then that injects uh, the uh, venom into the prey, all right? Uh, these guys are mostly marine. Uh, there are some freshwater jellies and this is showing a hydra here uh, and these guys are also fresh water now these guys are about like this big so okay uh, next are flatworms uh, so it's another jelly there another jelly there's a, another sea anemone so this is showing corals uh, so acidification of the oceans is leading to this coral bleaching uh, due to uh, more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which leads to more carbon dioxide in the water, which makes, uh, produces more carbonic acid. So that makes the sea more acidic. All right, let's look at flatworms. So flatworms are such things as tapeworms. This is showing the head of a tapeworm. Uh, liver, uh, flukes, so this is showing a fluke right here. And also planaria, uh, which um, is another type of flatworm. These guys have solid, unsegmented, bilaterally symmetrical worms. Uh, they are protostomes. They are acelomate, do not have a body cavity. They have a well-defined head and tail region. So if I go to this next picture, here's the head, here's the tail region over there. All right. Uh, they are hermaphroditic, so they contain both male and female gonads, uh, and they can engage in sexual and asexual reproduction. In fact, if you cut this planaria in half, you know, uh, it will produce two planaria. They have a single body opening right there, and that uh, serves its both its mouth and its anus. So uh, these guys can be uh, marine, freshwater, and parasitic. So here's showing a tapeworm here. So each one of these segments is their reproductive structures. These will like break off and, um, you know, contain eggs in there. All right. Let's move on to the roundworms. So the roundworms uh, include like Ascaris, which is heartworm, uh, pinworms, hookworms, and filaria. Uh, these guys are pseudocelomates, so a uh, false body cavity. They're unsegmented and they are bilaterally symmetrical worms. Uh, they are also protostomes. Uh, They're surrounded by a strong, flexible cuti cuticle, uh, and so they'll molt in order to grow larger. These guys are found in soil and aquatic sediments, uh, and they're also parasitic. So, you know, most of the things I talk about, like a whipworm here, are parasitic. Uh, so are pinworms and hookworms and heartworms. Uh, so this is showing heartworms here. Uh, but most of them are like this guy, and they live in the soil uh, and aquatic sediments there. Um, so, and there's lots and lots and lots of those guys. Um, so let's stop there.